It's the Arch Advocate Show for Thursday. Welcome, everybody. It is Tommy Robinson Day. Tommy Robinson is free. Free at last. Free at last. We are going to get way into that. But first, I want to give a special shout out to the patrons. All of you guys, thanks for the money. All right, yesterday was payday from you guys. Thanks for all of that. J.K. Burns, thanks for the raise, my brother. I appreciate that. It all goes to the show. Now, um, just... If look, I don't want to sit here on my podcast and tell people like, oh, send me some money. If you want to, right? Like if that's in your wheelhouse to do. There's a lot of things that you could be expressing your charitable giving on, right? And there's way more like noble things to do than to help me out with my podcast. Tommy Robinson's uh, defense fund, or or what was that guy with the Count Dankula, you know, he had a legal defense fund. He raised like hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that's good, right? People need to defend those. So just do whatever you want to do. If you do want to help, you know, financially with the show, uh, just go on to archadvocate.com, arch-advocate.com. Give a little money that way. You can do it monthly. You can do it a one-time thing on PayPal. It's up to you. It's down towards the bottom. But do, no matter what you do, join us in the social media spaces, all right? Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, right? Telegram is is awesome because it's just like it's like a live, open conversation. Also, I have something I want to ask you guys: like, Do you want to do like a live chat, like once a week or once a month, like a like a super chat? You know, um, I believe that I can do that, and if I don't, if I don't know how, I can figure it out. But if you guys want to do that, go on to archadvocate.com. And write me a message and let me know. All right. Also, if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, all right, this is the show. This is all there's going to be. It's just me talking. All right. If you want to uh, not watch this whole thing and just listen, you can do that. You can do whatever you want because you're a grown ass man and you can do whatever you want. Uh, but you see that little timer down there? That's how long the show is. All right. So. When people write on the Reddit and they're like, oh, it's just some guy talking. Yeah, dude, it's a podcast. This is the video version of it. Okay, cha-cha, right? I just do this because there's a there's a, a certain amount of people out there that that's how they take their podcasts. They like they prefer it on YouTube for whatever reason. I'm one of them, right? I've never once listened to the Joe Rogan podcast. I have always U- YouTubed it, right? I'm just that way. Same thing with Jordan Peterson, same thing with Dan Carlin, all of them, uh, with very little exception. All right? So that's let's, that's enough of that. If you want to help out the show, uh, but maybe money's a little tight, hit subscribe. Dude, that's, that's like money to me. You know what I mean? When I see I've got a couple of new subscribers on YouTube, every time I see that, I feel like that's money in the bank. You know what I mean? It's like my numbers are growing. It makes me feel better. It helps the show. It helps me get closer to, you know, when Google starts running ads on my YouTube show, then I get paid for that stuff. And guess what? You don't have to come out of pocket, right? It's like free money. Not really. There's no such thing as free. Except when it comes to Tommy Robinson, who is free. Now, we need to pay attention to this. First thing I want to say is uh, yesterday, I, had a, I, have a, I have a friend that lives uh, or used to live in Washington known the guy for years. It turns out that his sister was in Albania. That's where I'm at right now. Just cruising around the world. So I said, hey, you know, come on up. And uh, in talking with her, I realized that that, uh, there's, you know, we use names like Tommy Robinson or Count Dankula or whatever. Uh, Not everybody knows who these people are. (laughs) Not everybody pays attention to the same things that I pay attention to. The same things, it's the same thing's true for you. Like you could have something in your life that, that's, that's like very important to you and you could be like, oh, Pete, man, did you hear about such and such? And I'd be like, dude, I really, I don't know what you're talking about, right? Because not everybody pays attention to the same things. So if you don't know who Tommy Robinson is, that's fine, all right? I don't know how many of my listeners wouldn't, but if that's you, if you don't know who Tommy Robinson is, that's cool. But perhaps this podcast episode isn't going to be for you because I'm not going to take 15 minutes to explain who Tommy Robinson is or what he's been recently going through. I'm going to do this whole pod, whole podcast under the assumption that like, if you're listening, then you know who Tommy Robinson is. 
and why uh, he is significant. Is that fair? Right? Um, and again, like if, if I say Tommy Robinson, you're like, who? Uh, man, I, I, I'd still say listen in because I need the numbers, but you know, you might get lost in this episode. Tommy Robinson has spent a couple months in prison, and uh, we're going to get into why, but I want to read this uh, quote from, I believe, uh, one of his lawyers. And he, write, he wrote out, he says, So now we know, irrefutably, from the Lord Chief Justice himself, that Tommy Robinson was improperly tried, improperly convicted, improperly sentenced, and improperly treated in prison. Every single element of his treatment was illegal. Everything. He was a political prisoner. End of Facebook post. Now, there are men and women throughout history that are important. All right? When we look at like people like Joan of Arc, right? or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, or uh, remember that movie Tom Cruise did about the Nazis? Uh, Valkyrie, right? That was a true story. Those, those, the people that that movie was about, that all actually happened, right? There's people uh, throughout history that we can look to and, and point at them and say, that person made their stand and they did the right thing. And we have to, uh, we have to stop, right? We have to pause for a moment when we see those people and they're living and they're living in our lifetime, right? Because that means that we're part of an age, right? Uh, the, I, and you'll, you'll forgive me cause I, uh, I, I want to talk about that movie Valkyrie, but like I, I only saw it once and I don't remember any of the names or whatever, but you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, I, I I don't want to get into the history of, you know, who that guy was and why he was important in bringing down Adolf Hitler. But look, there's a lot of those people. Martin Luther King Jr., right? Well, that was in the 60s. Your parents were alive and cognizant, right? They were alive during the time of Martin Luther King Jr., and they all saw it. And I, I don't know how many people stopped and thought to themselves, like, wow, we are looking at, like, a living example of a man taking a stand or a woman taking a stand like Rosa Parks, right? These people are, we can look back in history and not, not the distant history, like history that we are immediately connected to. We're connected to Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. because our parents were alive and probably in college when that was going on or college aged. You know what I mean? Like they were, our parents were young people, but they were fully developed people. They weren't children, you know? So we're not that far removed and those people changed the world. I am in the nation of Albania right now and I bet you for $50, you couldn't find it on a map, you know? Like unless you already knew where Albania was. But here in Albania, there is a Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, just like every city in America. Think about that, Right? There's also a George W. Bush drive, and there's a whole reason behind that I'm not going to get into right now, but um, <clears throat> Martin Luther King Jr. changed the world. He changed the whole world. The world will never be the same because of that man, right? Uh, Albania, uh, Mother Teresa, who died recently, right? within the last 30 years, she was alive recently. She changed the world. She's from Albania. Right, just this little tiny Albanian chick that was dry as a raisin changed the world. So when you're when when you're when you see people that are historic, only it's, you're not living in history, you're living in the present. Like you have to pause. And it's not just Tommy Robinson, by the way. There's a lot of people out there. We are living in a strange time where there are a lot of people that are the modern day Martin Luther King Juniors and Mother Teresa's, and Gandhi, and Joan of Arc, who was, you know, probably a crazy person, but she changed the world. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Martin Luther, right, almost 500 years ago, saved the world right, from, from destroying itself. 
that's the times that we're living in. And uh, I like to refer to them as the way seers. Uh, there's a, there was a, a, a YouTube video called the way seer manifesto by John Garrett Laporto. And I recommend that you watch that. Some of it's bullshit, but most of it's pretty good. Um, and I, that's, that's how I see these people is that we are in these very strange times. And whenever times get as strange as they are, it is like divine providence creates these people and pushes these people to the forefront and they guide us through the, the, the tumultuous time. America was tearing, tearing itself apart in segregation and because of the tension, right? There was a great deal of tension in the United States during the, the whole civil rights movement and a way seer emerged and it was Martin Luther King Jr. and he showed the world the way and we all followed him and we made it through. That's how those people work, right? And throughout all of history, all of recorded history, those people are on the scene. Whenever you can see, whenever the world is at, at each other's throats, these people arrive. You can find it through every period of tumultuous history. And here we are again. All right? So who is Tommy Robinson? Who is this guy? What did he do? And what's happening here? Uh, the, the, the thing I wanted to point out is in these crazy times that we're in, you have, you, you have to take in the economics of everything that's happening. All right? I am fascinated by the world from an economic standpoint. Everything can be broken down into economic values and it makes the craziness a lot more palatable, easier to take in, digest, understand, and then navigate, right? When I was a currency trader, I, that's when I had that realization like, oh, my, you know, well, first of all, before I was a currency trader, I had no idea that there was this whole world of money where the value of nations' monies uh, changed. They went up and down based on different factors. Then I was, then I was a currency trader and I realized like, oh, the dollar goes up and down based on how well, you know, uh, politicians relate to and, and do business with these other nations. It's just people. It's just people being people with one another. And then, you know, the value of money goes, goes up or down. So it, it really does all come down to people, right? The manifestation of what people are doing is the economics of it, right? When you see people who uh, say that they are free, right? Like in America, we are the freest people on the planet. But people who argue that are people, it's like, I won't even, I won't talk to you if you want to argue that point. It's like, it's like, do you not, do you not read about how other nations do it? How their, how their governments work? It's like, you can't, it's not the same. It's close, but it's not the same. In, in England, you can be thrown in jail for Facebook posts. So not the same. England is the closest thing to us, or I would say England or Canada. They're the closest thing to us when it comes to freedom, but they're not to where we are. However, if you go to England or if you go to Canada, they, those people will tell you, yeah, we're free. We're just as free as America, man. We can do whatever we want, right? But they're not. It's like, well, can you, can you say whatever you want to say on Facebook? Well, no, you can be arrested. Well, then, you, like, I'll tell you, in Australia, for example, I, I think I told you guys this story before. There was a guy, you know, 20, you know, 15, 20 years ago, well, in 2004, who got arrested in Australia for having uh, taught the idea that, you know, he was a Holocaust denier, but he was like the kind of person who teaches that whole nonsense. And they arrested him 20 years after because he because he had gone back down to Australia. He was an English guy. So you're not free to, to say whatever you want to say. Now, you can make the argument like, well, yeah, but you shouldn't be saying that. That's not for me to decide. It's not for you to decide. People are free to say whatever they want. People are free to say or believe, say, do whatever they want as long as it doesn't endanger somebody else's life. That's it. All right. You could say, oh, yeah, but that's horribly offensive to me. You shouldn't say that. True. 
but you're making laws, you have laws against people saying things, that's a different matter. Now you're getting into metaphysical territory where you do not belong. God gave me a voice, I'm free to say whatever I want. All right? I am free to express my thoughts however I want. And Tommy Robinson is a guy who did exactly that. He was a guy who stood up and said, wait a minute here, wait a minute. We have all of these people who are flooding into our country illegally. And they are raping our women. They are kidnapping our children. They're throwing acid in people's faces. And they all have one thing in common. All right? They all belong to a particular religious ideology. And everybody freaked out. Oh, you're an Islamophobe. It's like, no, I'm, I'm a mathematician in this case. I'm, I'm working the numbers here. These people are coming in coming into our country, they immediately go onto welfare, and then they start attacking us. Why is this happening? Why is our government seemingly subsidizing this whole project? Why is this happening? Why is it that I now have to fear for my children's lives in my own country? Why, why does this happen? And recently, there was a uh, court case where these grooming gangs, I don't know if, I don't know if you know what that is, but this, uh, these these group of men were were taking young girls and they were and, and young boys and grooming them uh, for sex, right? Rape. And a couple of them had gotten caught and they had their their day in court. And Tommy Robinson was out there on in their day in court. He was filming them, right? You can go back and you can see that footage. And they arrested him and threw him in jail for that. That would never happen in America. Well, sorry. Let me rephrase that. That wouldn't happen today in America, but it looks like we're getting very close. And this is why I want to talk about like the significance of Tommy Robinson. He became, he was a political prisoner. That last line of that note from whoever it was that wrote that, and again, I believe it was his one of his attorneys, he wrote, every single element of this of his treatment was illegal. Everything. He was a political prisoner. Okay, Tommy Robinson is an Englishman. He's a citizen of the United Kingdom, of Great Britain. And he was a political prisoner in his own country. And for what? For what? For speaking his mind. Right? You have to be... The reason why Tommy Robinson is significant is because he is... Well, he's a number of things, but one of the things that he is is he is the canary in the coal mine. He's the one who's going in first. He's the one who is showing us, because of his imprisonment, his incarceration, and the treatment uh, that he received when he was incarcerated, that's what's in our future if we do not come together, band together, and take back the power from our politicians who have run amok. This land is ours, right? A nation is a nation because of its citizenry. Right? Those politicians, they work for us, not the other way around. There's a lot of people who do believe that it, it is the other way around. I had one of them on the show, Sam. He believes that jobs are created by the government. Right? He's 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 the kind of person there's people out there that believe, like, oh yes, the government can't be trusted and I hate the government, whatever. So now please give me more government. It's the strangest thing, but it happens. You need to be aware of that. You need to be aware of Tommy Robinson. Be aware of what he just went through. Because there's more of that to come. There's more of that to come. And the reason why Tommy Robinson is important and people like him, is there's a lot. Right? There's a lot of people out there that are doing very good work. Professor Jordan B. Peterson standing up against the Canadian government saying, no, you're not going to tell me what I will or will not say. I will say whatever I want to say. You can't make it illegal to... to refuse to say certain things. Compelled speech. It's different, right? Like you would think that the worst violation of your right to speak freely would be like, well, you can't say that you believe in Jesus. Or you can't say that, you know, God bless America. You can't say that, right? That would be a violation of the freedom of speech. But an even more egregious violation is having a, the law force you to say something. Oh, I have to refer to you as Z or Zer, 
So now you're forcing me to say words? No, we're not doing that. I will, I will feed the tree of liberty with my own blood before that happens. I, you're telling me that, that you know, in Canada is what Jordan Peterson was doing, who is another one of these, what I'm saying is like one of the way seers. One man stood up against the Canadian government and said, no, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. You're not going to force me to say things. That is a, that's not only a violation of what we have already come to as the way that we've designed our law. You're going against natural law when you do that, God's law. And we're not going to do that, right? Tommy Robinson did that, and he paid the price. And this isn't the first time either, by the way. And it, from the looks of things, it won't be the last. And I'm grateful for Tommy Robinson. Hey, Tommy, if for any reason you're actually hearing this, like, man, thank you. Thank you for your, thank you for your sacrifice, sir. My hat's off to you. And that's you know, I uh, I served in the United States Marine Corps when I was a young man. Uh, sir, thank you. That's uh, you're you are an absolute inspiration. So going back to the to this idea of you know an example. When I was in the Marine Corps, this you know this is something that pretty much only only Marines really know. There's a lot of mystique around the Marine Corps and who the United States Marines actually are as people. Uh, I remember, you know, when I got in, it was right at the end of uh, Desert Shield or Desert Storm. And um, the Iraqi army or the Iraqi National Guard, I think they were called, <clears throat> Saddam Hussein's army, those people were told that the, in order to become a United States Marine, you had to murder... A, an immediate member of your family, right? So that's what those people believed about the Marines, right? Now, obviously, that's not true. Uh, so <laughs> there is a bit of mystique and uh, misunderstanding about what actually goes on. Let me just explain this to you really quick. When you go to Marine Corps recruit training, right, MCRD, uh, you're there for three months, right? 82 days or something like that, 81 days. Three months, and uh, while you are there, you're uh, you're doing one of usually three things, right? You get up, you get breakfast, and then you uh, do what's called close order drill. And if you don't know what that is, it's marching, right? They teach you how to march, and uh, then you go and you eat lunch, and then you'll you'll go and you'll do uh, you know it's called getting bent and it's where the the drill instructor makes everybody like do push-ups and then jump up and do jumping jacks and then jump down and do sit-ups and whatever and they just do that until you just about pass out and then you'll go to a history class now this is the thing so when you're in the marine corps you're you know you're, you're doing one of three major things sleeping right because so you got to get your seven hours of sleep every night but the other, you know, 17 hours a day that you're awake, you're, you're doing one of two other things, and that's either close order drill or learning history. And it's a lot of learning history. Because what they do when you, you know, when you join the Marine Corps, what they do is they shave your head and they dress you up like everybody else, and then they teach you how to walk again. That's what marching is. It's being taught how to walk again. Right? <laughs> They teach, they, they rebuild you, and then they teach you the history of the Marine Corps. They teach you about... Uh, men like Dan, Dan Daly and men like Presley O'Bannon, men like Chesty Puller and these kind of people. And they, the reason why they teach you that history is because they're saying, you know, as they're rebuilding your, you know, persona, they're saying, this is who you are. You are Dan Daly and Presley O'Bannon and Chesty Puller. You do have the same courage and the same whatever as these people because you are going to be called a Marine and those men were called Marines. So you are the same. You have you have the same uh, fire in your belly or whatever you know that those men did, right? That's that's the importance of heroes. It's because we can look to those people and say, oh, okay, that's you know because that person is a human being. Hey, that's weird. I too am a human being. Therefore, I can do what they do. I, I can function as they functioned, right? Anything that person can do theoretically, I can also duplicate that behavior or whatever 
right? So when we see a Tommy Robinson making a stand and saying, no, I need some answers here. I need to know why is my government letting all of this happen? Why is this happening in my streets? And the government came and they slapped him down and they said, you're not going to, you're not going to speak like that, sir. And he stood up and he said, screw you, man. I am going, to, I'm going to speak. This is my country. I'm a living soul. I have children I have to protect. I am going to speak out against this. And you're not going to tell me what I'm, what I will or will not say, right? That would be an infringement on my God-given freedom. I'm not going to give that up. I would rather that I died. I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. And I'm not going to live on my knees, right? And, and old Tommy, he's taking some shots because of that. Because it does take balls to stand up for what you believe in. It takes balls, man, because you are going to get slapped down. You are going to get punished, imprisoned, starved, right? Ridiculed, threatened, harassed, maybe even murdered. That is going to happen. Right? Martin Luther King Jr. got murdered because of the stand that he took. Right? And thank God for Martin Luther King Jr. He changed the world. Thank God for Tommy Robinson. He is changing the world and we have him in our time. Right? He was one of the wasters, like him and, and Jordan B. Peterson, and you know, I could I could sit here and list off a whole bunch of them. We have these people in our time. It's important. Because 20 years from now, 50 years from now, there's going to be Tommy Robinson Way in Albania and in Topeka, right? In, you know, Mount Shasta, whatever. You know what I mean? When, when, when the history has played itself all the way out and these men are no longer a, a part of the living world, right? They're, they're a figment of history like Martin Luther King Jr., we're going to look back on it and say, I lived in those times. And so will you live in this time right now and recognize what's going on, who these people are, and the stands that they're making? Or are you just going to listen to the young Turk say, well, he's just a racist? Is he? Oh, maybe he is. Maybe Tommy Robinson is just some awful asshole racist. I better go do some research and find out on my own. Maybe not listen to the young Turks. Maybe not listen to CNN or the BBC, right? Or the Guardian, right? Don't listen to them. Why don't you go on, like right now, for the first time in history, you can actually do your own research. You can pull up videos of Tommy Robinson and the things that he has said. You can see the words coming right out of his mouth in English. You'll be able to understand it. And you can decide for yourself, is this guy is just some guy who hates Muslims? Is he? Why don't you why don't you look? Right? I've already made up my mind. Why don't you make up your mind? Because if you don't, you will be susceptible to when the Guardian comes along and writes a story, a hit piece on Tommy Robinson. Says, oh, this guy's just an Islamophobe. Is he? Then show me. Show me where Tommy Robinson was broad stroking all of Islam and saying all these all these people are just terrorists and moochers. Find me that footage and then I will listen to you. And while you're digging that up, I'm going to go and, and pull up Tommy Robinson videos and I'm going to hear what he actually did say. And I'm going to hear it in the context in which he said it in. And I'll make up my own mind because I'm smart. Right? I don't need the Guardian to be smart on my behalf. Or the, the London, you know, the, um, uh, the Financial Times of London, who is, for some reason, man, I used to love that newspaper. Man, when I was a commodity trader, I loved, I loved it. I loved that newspaper. I also got it for free because I was a trader, but it, it, it was always well done. The writers were always superb, and now they've just turned into some left-wing, it's like, do you guys even talk about money anymore? <laughs> you know what I mean? Stay in your lane, Financial Times. And these people take out hit pieces on Tommy Robinson and it's like they're trying to sway the opinion of the public. It's like, why? Why can't you just why why can't you just say what he actually said? I've seen what he actually said. Now, sure, like it's uncomfortable because the topic itself is uncomfortable. There are people right now that if you if you like you talk about Islamophobia, right? 
which one is it's a bullshit word to begin with but you talk if you go to to England and talk to some liberal which th that nation for some strange the English are a very tough people and I don't know why they have so much faggotry going on in that country right now there's so much liberal bullshit that goes on right now and I don't mean classical liberal I mean fruity you know uh color of the rainbow flag wearing you know that sort of liberal there's so much of that going on right now. And if you go to those people, and I've done this, right? And I'm speaking from experience here. You go to those people and say, hey, man, who are these people that keep throwing acid in the faces of people, many of whom are children, most of whom are women? Who are these people? You will just, if you just say just that, you will be called an Islamophobe. Isn't that strange? Right? It's strange because it's like, I didn't, I didn't say anything about Islam. I just asked you, who are these people? Who are these people that are splashing people in the face with acid? You're an Islamophobe. Why, well, you haven't answered my question. Who are these people? You racist bigot. I bet you voted for Trump. It's like, well, I, I'm asking a question. There's people, this is a reoccurring thing that's happening in your city. Why, do you, why does your mayor say that this is part and parcel of living in a big city where clearly there are many other big cities where that doesn't happen at all? So clearly it's not part and parcel. Why did your mayor say that? You're an Islamophobe. Like, can you please be objective here? People are getting hurt severely. They're getting maimed. We have not progressed as a, as a society to where we can repair somebody's face that has just been washed in acid. We don't know how to fix that yet. We're getting pretty close. But you know what I mean? Like these people are doing horrific things. Who are they? You're an Islamophobe. So here's Tommy Robinson. He stands up. He's like, oh, I know who these people are. They're Muslims. And they hate us. And if that's not bad enough, our government seems to be handpicking the ones that hate us the most, and they are importing them into our country. And they are letting these people from Eritrea and from Somalia to flood into our country so that they can go immediately onto the welfare and drain our nation of its resources. And these people hate us. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Right? Why is this happening? And so then they take young Tommy Robinson, who's got a couple of kids and a wife, and they throw him in solitary confinement. We just saw him released yesterday. He looks as skinny as a rail. And not skinny like he's been working out and, you know, drinking, drinking his water and getting the right amount of sleep. He looked emaciated. Which means that uh, either, he was, either he was tortured while he was in prison by, you know, lack of food or... Whatever happened, it, it's not how civilized people treat their prisoners. And furthermore, this had everything to do with politics. The idea of becoming a political prisoner by your own nation is absurd. Right? The only time that is supposed to happen to be a political prisoner is when you've committed treason. Right? You're not supposed... like that, that. It's like if you were... You know, it... You know, the equivalence in America would be like if you were an American and, you know, you believed yourself to be a communist. Like that by itself is not against the law. You can have whatever ideology that you want. But if you were sitting there and you decided to be a communist and then the government came in and arrested you, that you would, for being a communist, you would be a political prisoner. That would be a huge problem. Right? You can't arrest people for thinking different things than you do. Right? We have other laws in place to make sure that communists never reach any sort of seat of power, which evidently that mechanism hasn't been working. John Brennan, you know, head of the CIA, different topic. But, you know, uh, Tommy Robinson is, is an English citizen, and he was imprisoned because of his political beliefs. That's what's coming. And it's here. Do you understand? That's what's coming in our futures, and it's here. It just happened. You go, you go look through every video that Tommy Robinson has ever, you know, been a part of. Every stand that man has ever taken. You listen to the words that come out of his mouth. 
And just keep in mind, he was thrown in prison for that. For that. that that's where we're at, people. And you're going to need resolve because there's, there's, it's coming. John Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, he, he, he prophesied about this. And he said, look, man, we need some Americans to stand up with guns. Right? I read that, I read that quote yesterday on yesterday's show. Like, he, like he, he could see it coming. He knew. And he talked about it extensively, and then he was put to death. Right? This, this thing that we're going through, this has been manifesting for decades, and you're going to have to have resolve. And when guys like Tommy Robinson come along, and you can see it, you can see him, you can draw strength from that. You can say, well, that guy had the balls to do it, so I guess I'm fresh out of excuses. It's important when it comes time to, to be courageous to know who these people are because you can draw from their example. And that's why Tommy Robinson is important. Right? He's important to the United Kingdom. He's important to the United States. Because as freedom-loving people, as free people, we can look at that and say, nope, that's wrong. I may or may not agree with Tommy Robinson's point of view, his opinions, what he thinks are facts. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you agree with them or not. It only matters if you, if you know that you are free and if you can understand and discern the times and realize your freedoms are being taken away from you. And now people who've done nothing wrong are, going, are being thrown in prison willy-nilly. So we now know irrefutably from the Lord Chief Justice himself, whoever that is, that Tommy Robinson was improperly tried, improperly convicted, improperly sentenced, and improperly uh, treated in prison. Every single element of this treatment was illegal, period. Everything, period. He was a political prisoner. That just happened, people. It's not conspiracy theory. It's not some random theory. It's a fact. It just happened. Welcome back, Tommy. You were a free man every moment that you were in prison. That's another thing, too. You think about that. Should it happen? Should you get thrown in prison for speaking your mind and making a stand for the truth? You can throw me in prison. I'll always be free. You can break my body. I'll always be strong. You know what I mean? I'm resolved. And I have God on my side. I am free. And nobody's going to take that away from me. Tommy Robinson, you were free the entire time. God bless you, brother. Welcome back. Enjoy your vacation, your, your much-earned, much-deserved uh, vacation. Relax. I can, I can see that you're a bit wound up. Go unwind. Relax. Thank you for your work. Tommy, it, again, I, I don't know if Tommy Robinson would ever listen to this, right? But Tommy, if you, if you are listening, look, even if you were to quit right now, the whole world would owe you a debt of, of gratitude. I know that you're going to keep on fighting, but the work that you've done so far... It's like, man, you've done, you've done more than what most men will ever do in their lives. And I want to, personally, I want to thank you for that. Tommy, welcome back. Good to have you back. That's it for uh, today. Just kind of a short, short show today, half an hour or so. Uh, tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, last day of the week. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. I'm just, I'm so glad that Tommy's alive and he's back uh, amongst his loved ones and, and friends. And I will be pray praying uh, protection over that man's life. That's it. I'll talk to you all, all you saints and all the crypto creeps tomorrow.